Hello and welcome to Let's Ride Around Europe. This is day 15. And I am just leaving uh, Cranny? Cranny? It's spelled Crange with a J, but I'm pretty sure it's uh, like Crane or Crane or something like that. Um, Run away from Ljubljana to Vienna and as you can see there's going to be some mountains involved <laughs> with a, and yet another mountain pass uh, although I think this might be the last mountain pass that we're doing Aww. Um, but nevertheless we're going to enjoy it So yes, Slovenia. Um, I have been absolutely dead tired the whole time I've been here. Um, I felt like doing absolutely nothing yesterday, and I basically did. Like I went for a swim, and um, I had a hookup, and that's about it. It's, it's basically all that happened. I didn't go out and see the city at all. Second exit. I didn't go out and see the city at all, which uh, leaves me very saddened, but um, I just didn't have the energy for it. I really, I didn't even take the bike to charge. I charged it this morning. Um, if you watched like the last episode, um, Cranny is like halfway through that episode and I've basically just come out this far to avoid doing the same bit of road in reverse. Um, you've not really missed anything, it took like 15 minutes to get here. Um, but... Uh, oh yeah! I, I have no idea how to pronounce the name of this pass or really if the word that I saw for it is the correct one. It's something like Jezersko. Um But, yeah. N n I do not know. I might, like, Google it or Wikipedia it later. Um, just to see if I can figure it out. Um, I concentrated my uh, Googling and wikipedia that I did on uh, Slovenia itself, because last episode it was like, Sure, I don't really know anything about this place. So, yeah, a bunch of the stuff I said is broadly correct. Uh, this plane is kind of like a thing. It's just the northeastern bit. Um, most of Slovenia is mountainous and forested. Uh, it's got a little bit of karst region, uh, I think, down in the south. And. Um, it borders Croatia, Hungary, and Austria. But yeah, it's basically just all mountains and forests. Uh, and I've, like, the bit that I have seen is basically just this bit. And this is partly the poorest part of the country, too. Um, yeah, I said Slovenia has done rather well for itself, and it does appear to have done rather well for itself, although there's a lot of sort of former. Um, communist stuff that um, like is still around that people complain about uh, like neo-libs complain about um, one thing that's rather interesting it Jezersko, there we go one thing that's really interesting about it is that that one? no that's not 400 meters. Well, Google's been doing this. Google's been doing like, in 600 meters, turn right, turn right. I'm like, what? That wasn't 600 meters. But, yeah, one interesting thing is that uh, it's the economic stuff about it really reminded me of Ireland. Um, You know, they had their whole period of, like, rapid growth in the 90s and 90s, sort of 
focused on debt and then the debt crisis hit them pretty bad although unlike Ireland they managed to avoid having to be bailed out and um, one really like interesting difference between them and Ireland is that uh, they have very low FDI well Ireland has loads of FDI because it's a tax haven um, Slovenia doesn't um, so that's pretty interesting uh, it's apparently the most well off of all of the Slavic countries which is interesting um, its language is unique to it uh, Slovene um, I don't really know enough about languages to talk about like which language groups it's a part of and stuff um, all I know is I'm just like totally stumped by it um, I think it's probably closer to maybe like you know Italian uh, from a Western perspective I guess Yeah, that's uh, it's sort of a little rundown on Slovenia. Um, it is considered to be a developed nation, which is unsurprising because it's in the Euro um, and also in the EU. Although, you know, what that means is kind of like really highly variable. You know, there is there are huge gaps between some of the Eastern European developed nations and some of the Western European developed nations. But, it does seem to be quite a nice place. And I will have to go back. <laughs> it's a common thread, huh? It's like, oh, Stonewolf goes somewhere, declares it to be very pretty, says he has to come back. Um, but yeah. Uh, this morning I got a free charge, which is really cool. Um, I went to a charger that was kind of a little bit on the way. Um, and they said, yeah, plug surfing will work, and I got there, and plug surfing doesn't work at it. It's like, okay. Um, but like the hotel manager was there, he was like, do the whole, oh wow, what electric motorbike thing. And, um, and he was like, you came all the way from the UK? I was like, yeah. Uh, and he just gave me like a free charge of drink. I'm like, hell yeah. Um, so that's Knox Hotel Ljubljana. It's actually a little bit just outside Ljubljana to the west, but um, yeah, I will I will put a link in the description below so that you can find that hotel if you were ever down in this part of the country, because that was really cool, um, and it was a good fast charge, and I um, charged there more than I needed to, not on purpose. Uh, I actually intended to leave at 70% just so that I wouldn't heat the battery up but I left it like 82 um, just because I was messing around getting myself ready and the charge was still going fast because it was still green ah, glorious having like green battery um, when Energica says yeah it takes 40 minutes to charge the battery that 40 minutes I have noticed tends to be when the battery is warm because um, when the battery is green like it charges pretty like pretty quickly which is cool right. what do you mean by slight right okay okay what you mean by slight right is we're going to run to the right that's not very slight, Google. That's just the road bears right. I'm gonna call this Jizersko. Um, and it's gonna be wrong, and it's gonna be not even the way that you pronounce it. But for the purposes of this video, we'll have to do it. Yeah! Uh, free charge, it's pretty cool. Uh, uh, yeah, when the battery is green, I think it charges a little faster than spec. Um, it's 
so it's these little things that like you don't realize about vehicles until you've like had the chance to really bet in with them, you know? Um, but I think it's cool. Um, I'm also out pretty early, like... This video started at 11, and I was already like 15-20 minutes into my trip at that point, and already had charged. So... We're doing good on time. Um, but yeah, I, I do regret like not going out into Ljubljana and stuff. It was kind of a shame. I also didn't go to Croatia for obvious reasons. <laughs> like, I, uh, I just really wasn't feeling it. Also, it would have been like a six, seven hour run trip. Um, so, I put a pin in it for another day. Um, but actually, uh, it wouldn't have been a great trip anyway, because my hookup um, works for the fire service. And uh, he was saying that there's a lot of wildfires down the south part of the country, especially near the coast, which is the direction that I would have been going. Um, so that kind of sucks. And suddenly we're coming into the mountains. I actually had the name of the pass there, and it was like Jizerski. So, I don't think I'm that far off. I had one of those like open closed signs. Oh wow, uh, I've got all my vents open, and suddenly it's actually rather cooler down here. I guess. No. Europe's, Europe's got a lot of like weird history of borders moving back and forth, especially in sort of these kind of regions. Um, and this road does go up towards the border. And there's a bridge there which makes it a chunk point, so it makes sense as a place to put a pop box, I guess. look up more of the history of Yugoslavia because uh, it's actually kind of interesting. Um, it was basically a communist dictatorship but also a member of like the non-aligned group um, which not even China joined <laughs> you know uh, like after the Sino-Soviet split China basically kept their colors nailed to the Soviet side because I mean, what else are they going to do? Um, whereas Yugoslavia um, it really was more of a non-aligned nation. Um, and it'd be interesting to like look up how open their borders were, you know, how well they traded with the nations. Because they bordered with Austria, which is also a, a non-aligned nation. And also with Italy, which uh, was a hotbed of flip-flopping from one side to the other, kind of. They're always sort of ostensibly on the uh, the western side, but in terms of socially, um, they had a lot of like a lot.
lot of internal turmoil. getting quite warm in the sun out of the plane, but uh, now I am feeling uh, chill and not in like a, you know, not in like in an emotional sense. <laughs> I'm feeling chill in a, I might want to put on a jumper sense. Light on, so yeah. is it raining? Holy shit! No wonder I'm cold. <laughs> It's raining, I'm gonna have to stop for a moment. Um, but of course, we're in a road work zone, so like, where can I even stop? Um, also, I have my summer gloves and I don't have any winter gloves with me. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is not good. Um, let's see if we can find somewhere to uh, pull in. This is very pretty though, I mean. Coming up along with this river and this narrow gorge, winding around like the contour of the gorge with the river. I guess I'm gonna pull in there, but it looks very gravelly. Crossing over the river where appropriate. Looks like we're widening out up here. Road's closed. That'll do. If I'm gonna get rained on, I'm gonna close my vents up. That's gonna have to do. Looks like the rain's not persistent. There's a limit to what I can achieve without actually taking the jacket off, unfortunately. But I got the two front ones done up. Wait, stop. If it starts to get serious.
actually I need to stop for those because they're uh, they're all um, creased up. Well, I just got my legs and arms open now. My back ones are a little bit open, which annoys me, but um, they'll be fine. As long as it doesn't rain too hard. The other pass was like that too, it was very quiet. Um, Loibel. Oh, look at this. Look at this! Hell yeah! We're still like way down, we're like keeping pace with the river, so... You know what that means, like, for the future. <laughs> There's gonna be switchbacks up here somewhere. Oh, we're gonna cross the river again. This is really cool looking. In the UK, they just, like, use this metal crap. These guys are like, yeah, let's make it pretty for a bit. into Austria and it's going to be a beating song and I'm going to forget to open my vents again. That's how this works. Okay. So aside from motorbikes saying that there are bumps. Now we're starting to ascend. There's another one there. Look at that. It's like made of wooden piles. So, okay. We're going with the Jizerks go. bump there. Um, unexpectedly down again. Actually the opal had this really cool bit in the middle where you went down. Um, and then like back up like both really steeply. Was it Grossglockner had like a false peak? Yeah Grossglockner had a false peak but I think that was like two peaks. Whereas um, Leubel was just like you need to be up to get across this bit, but then you need to be down to get across this a bit. Um, it wasn't really like a double peak. That was a cool church up top of the rock as well. This is really cool. They have pillboxes in all of these bridges. There's no information sign about it, but... Uh, I won't be able to read it, so even if I carried to stop, um, which would be cool, uh, I wouldn't be able to read it.
there are definitely some of these places where you could just like take a whole day. Uh, Grossglocker is very much one of those. You could take a whole day from Grossglocker. That's a guest house, you could like stay here. The remains of a bridge there. Single track, huh? There's vaguely a line. Like the. There might have at some point been a line in the middle of this road. But it's not there anymore. Like, it's, you can just vaguely make it out. Uh, it probably doesn't appear on camera at all. But we're in switchback country. Oh, yeah. gotten confused that's okay it's probably very hard to like get your GPS signal way down here but basically you just stick in this road that's, that's all the directions that I need. This is actually quite interesting. Because it's not just like switchbacks. Um, like it's not just back and forth. It's kind of like... Kind of windy, kind of switchbacky, and the switchbacks are in the winds. Yeah. yeah. community up here. Like, it's not just like a tiny little place in a couple of houses, this is actually a place. Oh wow. There's actually snow up in those mountains. Partially hidden in the mists. Like, this is a big camera. I'm like, is there? I'm like, oh yeah. Not that I was going all that fast. Ah, yes. Petrol. I do like these stations, they're just like petrol. <laughs> I'm gonna guest house. I like that style. I really do. Hardly sure if the border is here or if the border is further up. The border is basically the top of the pass, but uh, I don't know if this community is at the top of the pass. I haven't seen 
the Austria sign yet. I mean, at least the border is in a sensible place, like, like right at the top of the pass. Like, there's a real, yeah, there's a real demarcation between the two areas. Uh, camping, glamping, B and B. English really is pretty pervasive, um, even into Eastern Europe these days. Um, uh, it's like, so English is like a working language of the EU, um, like most EU business is done through English. Um, French is sometimes used as well, like French is a big language, um, but it doesn't have anywhere near the prominence that it used to be. French is kind of no longer the lingua franca, ironically. Um, oh wow, look at that other valley over there, like, I could see why there's a proper community up here, like this is just, there's a plateau with a bunch of like open space. Uh, a few valleys coming off of it. Like we've had to come up that like narrow little valley to get to it. It's really interesting. And the road uh, goes up there apparently. It looks like more switchbacks. Pretty church. It does look like more switchbacks. The thing is, this community is called Jezersko. Which is what I remember from the map, which is why I'm not super sure about the name of the pass because like is the pass also called that okay, here we are this is a relieving Jezersko again. I bet there are like buses, coaches that go across this bit. 8% because they go up to there. We're already up above the valley. Um, there's a lot of warning signs. Um, mainly for walkers I think. Look at all that. Look at that. Amazing. And away we go. Up higher and further. kilometer up. Yeah. It's nothing. Forget how high Loibel was. I think it was like 1600 or something. Um, merely as high up as Denver. Still don't want to fall off one of these though. It'd be bad. I mean, obviously it would be bad, but like, you know, it'd be worse than normal. <laughs> it's, um, they all have quite a distance done. Um,
Oh, that's that's my foot. I actually keep like the the step of my heel against the um, the foot peg, which like sports writers will tell you is wrong. Um, but like, if you're off touring or whatever, like if you're doing long rides, it's a lot more comfortable. And also, I find it makes it a lot easier to switch over to the uh, foot brake. Which matters on the road because you need that quick reaction. Like on the track, you can kind of plan things. Uh, on the road, you might need to just stop. But, um, yeah, uh, with my feet at that position, my toes grind first. My toes are basically the limit of my ground clearance, uh, which is interesting. Um, it certainly means that I notice when I'm, when I'm, when I'm about to grind the bike out, um, because my toes will touch and I'm like, whew! Um, can't be too good for my boots though. Uh, should probably check the wear on my toes, the toes of my boots. I think the left side hasn't grown out as much as the right. I think there's definitely a bias. Oh, here we are. Uh, this is the top of the pass. Jizzerski, 1200 meters. And that's the end of the episode. Um, if you've got anything to say, you know, hit up the comments. Uh, if you liked the video, uh, give it a like. Check out some other videos, you might enjoy them. Uh, if you do, consider subscribing and hit the bell. And if you would like to reward me for entertaining you today, you can find my coffee link in the description below. Bye bye